All right, so our primary focus with this video is to show you how to write quadratic equations if we're given a table or a set of coordinates, which are basically the same thing. We've got three coordinates right here written in a tabular method. Now, there's a couple ways that people go about teaching this. I'm going to show you the way that's the easiest. I, I think that's just the best way to do it. <laughs> I'm not going to give you the hard way, but you normally see something like this. Write the equation of the quadratic so we know it's a quadratic. We don't have to guess and say, is it, is it linear? Is it quadratic? Um, if that is the case, if you have to determine if it's quadratic, um, I'll post a little link or a card in the, the video to show you how to determine based on a table if something is linear, quadratic, or exponential. But we're going to assume that we already know it's quadratic. Okay. Now, the second thing, what I need everybody to know is that every single quadratic can be written as ax squared plus bx plus c, where a, b, and c are just real numbers. Any quadratic you ever come across can be written like that. Now, I've used y here. You'll probably see f of x in Algebra 1 or Math 1. Um, just y, just to shorten it, but just so you know, that's the same thing as f of x. Okay. So, step number one. If you have seen my video on how to determine if something is a quadratic equation or not, we need to look at the change in the change. If you're not comfortable with that, make sure you go back and watch the video on that. And I'm gonna show you what I mean by that. So I'm gonna make a second, well, I mean third. Let's see if I can draw a straight line. Third and fourth column here. This represents this delta, that's the Greek letter delta, means change. So the change in Y. And then we're gonna do the change in the change. Now don't don't write this, I just use it as a, a symbol. This is the chain, the second change, that's what they really call that. The change in the change of Y. So first off, let's figure out how Y is changing. So from here, from six to 15, Y is increasing by how much? You should get nine, that's increasing by nine. From 15 to 28, it's increasing by 13, right? Now we look at the change in the change. So these two right here, from nine to 13, we're increasing by four. Now, the whole purpose of even doing that was so that we can find out um, and go backwards because the whole point of this shortcut method that I'm showing you is you and I want to find out what the value of y is when x is zero. We wanna know that because it'll make life so much easier because normally we're gonna, and we're gonna end up with one anyway, these types of problems, you have a system of equations that we have to solve. And I'm, I'm missing all my arrows. Hold on one second. Let me let me clean this up a bit. But we're um, we're doing a system of equations now. If you don't know, it's not that we can't do it if we don't know, you know, what the value of y is when x is zero. But it makes it so much easier. It gives us the value of c up here right off the bat, and it saves us that much trouble. So that's why I make such a big deal out of this change in the change because then we can go backwards. If I know that this is increasing um, from nine to 13 and the change in the change is four, that means whatever's up here, um, whatever number is right here, because, and this is what I was getting at before, quadratic equations, the change in the change is constant, so it should be four. That's That comes from the other video that I was talking about. So if that change is four, then we know that this number right here should be less four less than nine, it should be five. And if this is five, if the change in y is five, then that means that this number, whoops, a little bit too long, this number should be what? That should be one, because if I add five to one, that's where I get the six from. And again, if none of this makes sense, go back and make sure you watch that video on determining if a function is quadratic from a table. Super important, you will be asked these questions, I promise you that. But what that means is we just found out, well, y is one, and every time we do this over here, x is decreasing by one. So that means that this is zero. So what we just found out is that for our quadratic equation that we're trying to come up with, I can plug in zero real quick. So zero times x squared plus um, b times zero plus c. And we know that that's equal to one. Y is one. So if you look, zero cancels out, that's gone. B times zero, that's zero. The only thing we're left with is a C. We just found out that C is equal to one. And I know it's like, okay, cool, like that, that was a lot of work. But compared to the other method where we don't know this, where X is zero, this is the Y intercept, by the way, where we don't know the Y intercept, it's much more difficult. It takes a lot more time, much more tedious. I promise you that. Um, right off the bat though, we got one of our variables. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back. We're gonna rewrite our standard form of our quadratic because we know what c is now we just have okay well ax squared plus bx plus one so all we need to find are a and b and now here's where 
um, normally I would just um, say pick the easiest coordinate and we're gonna plug that in so let's do let's, let's plug in 1 comma 6 we can't use this one because we've already used that and everything would cancel out we couldn't find a and B so we're gonna use 1 comma 6 and we're just gonna substitute into this equation when again where this one is that C that we just found right over here so if we plug in x is 1, we get y is equal to 6. So we get 6 is equal to a times 1, which is just a, plus b times 1, because again, we're, we're substituting x equals 1, so plus b, plus 1. I want to get a and b completely by themselves, so I'm going to subtract this 1 from both sides, and the 6 becomes a 5. That's a 5. I can't write very well. <laughs> so a plus b is equal to 5. There's our first equation. I'm going to kind of put this up here. It's getting really crowded right now. I'll put it up here and we'll put like a circle around it. We're going to use that in a second. Now we need a second equation. The fundamental theorem, one, I can think of the name of it. It's not the fundamental theorem of algebra. It might be. Maybe it's whatever it was. Anyway, long story short, if we have two variables, we need uh, two equations to solve them. So let's pick another point and I would pick the easiest one the smallest numbers are generally the easiest so let's plug that in um, when x is 2 y is 15 so I'm going to plug in 15 equals a times 2 squared so 4 plus 2 times b plus 1 and again I want to get a and b completely by themselves or whatever the a term with their coefficient is so I'm going to rewrite that as 4a just to make it conventional so 4a plus 2b plus 1 I'm gonna get rid of this 1 by subtracting now if you notice this looks really similar to this one up here right that's the whole point of this is so now if you remember your um, oh I can't even remember the name of it <laughs> elimination solving uh, systems of equations by elimination what we do I'm just gonna put this 5 equals a plus b right on top of each other and if you remember if you don't remember this um, I've got a video of this somewhere for solving systems using elimination. I'll put a link to that in the description. But basically, we want to multiply one of these equations so that one of these variables eliminates or cancels out. If I can turn this b into a negative 2b, then 2b minus 2b would cancel. All I'd have to do to make that happen is multiply this whole equation by negative 2. So if I do that, the 5 becomes a negative 10. I'm going to use a new color for the new equation, negative 10 and we, the a becomes a negative 2a, and b is just negative 2b. And if you look, now these cancel. 2b, that's why they're called elimination, because b you know, eliminates. We could have eliminated a as well. b just happened to be a little bit easier. And now we just add like normal. 14 minus 10, 4. 4a minus 2a, we get 2a. And we just found out by dividing by 2, a is equal to 2. Now we've got our second value, Second, second value, second variable. And if you look, you can pick any one of these equations and we're gonna plug back in that value of A. This one up here looks super nice. Uh, I'm gonna move it down here just so we can see it a little bit better. If five is equal to A plus B, you and I just found out that A is equal to two. So I'm gonna substitute that value in. That's a two, by the way. My twos and Zs look really similar. <laughs> but all we would do is subtract two and we would get b is equal to 3. So all that work, and these little triple dots just mean in conclusion or therefore. So a is equal to 2, b is equal to 3, and we already found out that c is equal to 1. So we're going to take all those values, and let me move this down here, and we're going to plug them into that standard form of a quadratic. y is equal to a, which again up here, a was 2, so ax squared, so 2x squared, plus bx, we found b was equal to 3, right there, there we go, let's move that, plus three times x, and we already found out in the very, very beginning that c was equal to one. So we'll plug that back in. And that's our quadratic. That quadratic would represent this. If you plug in zero, you get one. If you plug in one, you get two times one plus three times one plus one, that's six. If we plug in three, that's the only one that we haven't tested, but just, just to be sure, maybe we got something wrong. If we plug in three, we get 2 times 3 squared, which is 9, plus 3 times 3, which is 9. So 18 plus 9, that's 27, plus 1 is 28, and that's exactly what our y value is when x is 3. Okay, so I'm going to put a link because this video is getting kind of long, I apologize. But this is a difficult subject. It's very tedious. 
algebraically intensive, you're doing systems of equations, um, you're doing this change in the change technique, which if you're not comfortable, you should be comfortable, you should have seen this already before even starting this. Um, the, the step, the goal is to find out our y-intercept, to go backwards, figure out what your change in y is, what your change in your change in y is, so that we can move backwards and figure out our y-intercept. And then we, right off the bat, we got our c-value up here. And again, I can't tell you how much easier that makes this problem. Otherwise, we're going to be stuck with more work. We, we would be probably maybe halfway done at this point if we didn't do that method. So I teach that all the time. Get the value of um, y when x is 0 makes life a lot easier. And then we just go about our business of uh, elimination, okay, where you pick two other, two other completely random points and plug them in. You'll get two equations. Solve by elimination. You could solve by substitution as well. I know I'm going on a rant here, but you don't have to do elimination. I just prefer that one because it, it's kind of convenient here. The numbers are kind of nice. Usually they will be. Um, but that's pretty much it for this one. Hopefully this video helped you a little bit on how we actually write quadratic equations from a table or coordinates. Um, this, there's nothing that obvious about seeing this one time and being like, oh, I got it. You got to go back and practice these problems. I promise you that. And then you'll get it like that. Okay, so again, hopefully this video helped you and uh, we'll see you in the next one.